Yes, Blue sir. You got a man right here. You got a man right here. That's crazy. Yeah, he is. What's, What's up, brother? How, On the highway. How long, how long you been up? Since about two? Man, I've been up since like four or some shit, man. That's crazy. Put this right here. Every morning? Yeah, basically, I'm on jail time. Right. So I'm still on jail time. Yeah, so what time I, you shut it down, though? I can't depends. Go to sleep I, man, I, 10, man, I, man, I be sleep. I be sleep. Sometimes I go to sleep like around three, four, get back up. Then I be in, go back to sleep. Three, I'll be four back in the four, morning. No, three, four in the afternoon. Oh, so take you go nap. to sleep, take yeah, a nap. I get my then. power nap. Got shit. Got Y'all got a big production, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is some. Y'all got a million dollar production. Yes, we do. That's a lot of shit, man. <laughs> man, we try. You know. It's a lot of competition out there, bro. You know Damn, it's a lot of shit. Exhibit A. One, right, two, like, <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. How you doing? We, we got the production. We try to get the profit. We try to get we one only of got, those. Listen, listen. We only got four cameras, and it's me, Gil, and our cameraman. That's it. Right. Mm-hmm. right and we right. pack that shit up in two suitcases, pull up, get it done, and get the fuck out of there. Y'all got some real live sound. Y'all got some shit in here. Nah, we working. <laughs> We've been working right, for a minute. Baby. Hey, congrats. congrats. No, congrats. congrats yeah, man. Deal. Yeah. Okay. When we start? We start now? We, we, so we talking we already. Are, like, I mean, I can yeah. introduce the show now, though. Since yeah, he, yeah, he gave us a, shit, since yeah. he gave us a segue. Crazy. Hey, Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, no- hey, man, welcome to the pivot. Uh, obviously, we got Channing, Freddie T. I'm RC. Thank you for subscribing. Continue to like. Pass it on to people. Let them know how much you love the show. We are so grateful for you. The DraftKings, Happy Dad. We appreciate your sponsorship. Um, and just remember, man, we could just go continue to do a show. Like Freddie T says, man, we're so excited to have him back. Like anybody can podcast. Not everybody can pivot. But this is one of the biggest pivots we've ever done. I'm going to introduce him. He probably doesn't need an introduction. Uh, it's Wallace Peoples. For, yours, for y'all who don't know, it's Wallow267. I mean, entrepreneur, author master marketer, social media influencer, orator, anything that you can think of of someone taking themselves from the bottom and bringing themselves to the top, this man has done. And his influence goes far beyond just the podcast and just our communities. And so, man, I just want to get right into it. First of all, thank you for being here. No problem, man. Um, You have a story that is not just unique to you in the sense of what you went through growing up in and out of juvenile homes at 17 sentenced to 20 years in the penal system. And you also aren't the first guy who's ever been in prison that had dreams of doing something else, had dreams of inspiring, had dreams of transcending their circumstances. But you've done it in a way like we've never seen. What has made your ascension possible as compared to other people who were in your exact position as a young black man? I just think uh, a lot of discipline. It take a lot of discipline. Uh, it's hard growing up in the streets in any ghetto in America. And uh, you trying to, you got to navigate the shit. You know, you go through identity crisis. Then prison, prison bring a whole lot of other shit on it. But when I was, like I tell people, when I was in, you know, I wasn't in jail. I was in, yeah, I wasn't in prison. I was in Princeton. I wasn't in the state pen. I was in Penn State. And I was just getting my game together. I made a decision to myself when I was in prison. Ah. Eh, that old shit ain't gonna work. The old conversations, the street shit, and I gotta start reading more, I gotta start looking at things that's outside of our culture. What happens sometimes to us in the ghetto, especially when you come in from prison, whatever, a lot of us lack exposure. We're not exposed to new things, uh, different cultures, different environments. Most people only leave the ghetto when they go to prison or when they go to the graveyard. You know how the graveyard be outside of the, <laughs> it be a little, that's the only time we really leave. And I knew that, so I read more. I used to watch a lot of Anthony Bourdain. All his shows, he was one of my favorite guys because he exposed me to life. Damn, it's all this life out there? Because I'm doing When I get out, I got to figure life out. So I just locked in on discipline. And I said, when I get home, I'm going to go hard on me. I'm going to go hard on change. I'm going to go hard on some different shit and just seeing different stuff and just learning new stuff and realizing, like, hold up. You mean to tell me I could be black and not have to worry about being cool? Because, you know, when you be cool, you got to do a lot of shit to be cool. You got to get money. You got to fuck all the, all the chicks. You got to do all You got to do all this shit. You got to dress a certain way. You got to have a jewelry. You got to have a car. But sometimes in the ghetto, 
you got to do illegal shit to get that. I was like, fuck all that. That ain't going to work because I wasn't no good criminal because I always got locked up. Yep. You know, some of you got a cousin. You're like, damn, he ain't going to realize he's 45. He's still being a cr- He's still going to run out of jail. I realized, ho, oh, this ain't working. I remember my, my homeboy when I was younger, his mom said, you motherfuckers can't do wrong right. Y'all need to start learning how to do right right. And, I, and it hit me when I was in jail. I'm like, yo, man, because I'm not trying to be 50 years old running from the police. You know what I mean? And I knew that there was more out there. And that technology, I said, anything's possible with that shit. And bro, you got the 20, and it was armed robbery? Two armed robberies, two firearm violations. Firearms. What pushed you to that? Because I, 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 you know, I saw you said before, like you were trying to fit in. Yeah. Trying to, you know, but what pushed you to that? And then could you kind of take us through what those happened, situations? Yeah, what happened was I had two different situations, man. One, I had uh, robbed a video store. One, I robbed KFC. I used to rob the money bag. I used to go and get the money bags before they try to do the deposit. I like, oh, they're going to do it today. Let me slide up in that motherfucker. Uh, but before that, I used to boost and steal, do petty shit. But that was quicker. I had a big homie that said, man, we get these money, but he put me down. I'm like, oh, damn, that's quick. That takes a second. But I ain't understand when, that, when you get that firearm in it, it changed the game. I ain't understand that one right there. He ain't tell me that. That the time go from, you know, some, some light shit to, you know, so that's what I did. And it was like, it was just, it's this a lot of shit be environmental, man. And you want to be down and you want money. You got to understand, being black in America and living in the ghetto, use a cornball, use a sucker, use a lame, use a weirdo. If you don't get money and you don't, and you, and you, and you don't wear jewelry, you don't wear designer clothes, you're a fucking clown. So I'm growing up in the 80s and 90s, you know, where it was, we didn't handle social media. But, but we had that. And if you look, it's still sort of like that now. So you got to understand. And when I'm in the ghetto, man, it's like, you mean to tell me I ain't gonna be no criminal when everybody in the world respects a successful criminal? Go ask a judge, go ask a lawyer, go ask a, fucking, uh, a sheriff, an FBI agent, what's your favorite movie? They're gonna say some success. Godfather, Scarface. America loved a successful criminal. I need to be that. And then I'm looking in my neighborhood when a drug dealer pull up, he pull up in the car, he got the bins, his music blasting, it's the 80s, he got, he got all the jewelry on. He coming to get the baddest woman, the sexiest, most beautifulest woman in the neighborhood jumping in his car. But you guess what? You know what else happening? When she jumping in his car, Ms. Brown, Ms. Smith, Ms. Lois, all of them is looking at that man with admiration and respect. They ain't looking at me. Only time they talk to me is when they need me to go get him a pack of cigarettes from the store. I said, oh, so I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this whole movie take place in the ghetto of, oh shit. If I'm black and I'm a young and I'm a black man in America, I'm not going to be respected in my community unless I'm a fucking criminal and I can succeed at being a criminal and I put some jewelry on my neck and I, and, and I put some designer clothes on my, and I fuck all the bitches in my neighborhood. If I'm not dead, I lose. I'm nobody. I'm corny. And don't nobody want to be corny in the ghetto. Yeah. The worstest thing is to be corny. Don't nobody want to be corny or look like it's a weirdo or lame. You want to be cool. So what do we do? We do what makes us get accepted. How do we get in the game? How do we get the equipment? This shit, most of the shit in the ghetto to be cool, you need equipment. Jewelry, car, clothes. You, how you gonna get the equipment? You ain't getting that shit working no job. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We didn't have it now when we knew about credit, when we knew about this. When we, knew, we didn't have all that shit back then. Now you got things where it's though, now these young men, they got all these opportunities to win now. With technology, it ain't no excuses now. You got so many ways to get job, employment, start a business. We didn't have that. We didn't know that. Now it's like, they got the world in they in hand, they got a satellite in their hand with the phone, you know? But that's what it was, man. I wanted to be fucking down. And it pushed me to the, it'll push you to the edge to do some dumb shit. And that's what I did, and, and, and it got me where it got me. Hey, Wallow, I saw uh, a video where you, uh, you spoke about five, five minutes and those incidents that you're speaking and chanting about. You said that five minutes cost you 20 years of your life, right? With that, and you inspiring. So it's two sides to you how you inspire from, from what I've seen in you. You know, you inspire teaching people game, and then you also try and inspire the youth. Yeah. Do you feel more of an obligation to teach game or to circumvent our youth from making frivolous decisions as you did when you were younger that'll land them where you were? It's a mix of both. So it's, like, it's like gumbo. It's like, it's like vegetable soup. You know how you get anything in there because, all right, I can tell you not to go to the street game, but I still got to give you some game to show you a different way. Because I can say, put that package down, but I also got to say, listen, check this business spotlight with this dude teaching you how to get your LLC, or this boy teaching you how to clean your credit up. Mm-hmm. So it's a mixture of this shit. It, it, it's like a mixture, because it's like, uh, like me personally, it's like, 
I always tell these dudes it costs too much to be a criminal. And I was one of the people, out of, out of a lot of people, I was one of the people that uh, I was able to flip that time. That five minutes that it took me to get all that time, you know, later on in life, about like we in Philadelphia, about like probably 20 blocks from here, is a, is a restaurant called Devin's, right? And I took, and, and, and I went into Devin's with Eric Nardini and Dave Portnoy to Barstool Sports, and it took me less than five minutes to, to close a multi-million dollar deal. You see what I'm saying? So I was able to take that time, because I'm, I'm always thinking about time. You see what I'm saying? And that was in, that was in 2019, six months after we started the podcast. Mm -hmm. Now, and then I walked in the office, we walked in the office about a couple months ago and took four minutes to close another deal. Right. It's no, it was no bullshit, you know? So it's like, I go from doing these robberies for petty money, doing robberies and crime for petty money that taking five minutes to take away 20 years of my life to go and take five minutes, four to five minutes down here at this restaurant and four to five minutes in Barstool office some months back to get tens of millions of dollars. Do you feel like you've gotten that 20 years back? You know what's crazy? That's why I go hard every day to try to help people as much as possible because I don't want it back because it's, it's what helped me become and what helped me wake me up and, and realize, oh shit, I was on some dumb shit. It helped me become a man. I had to go through that process and I had to go to that, that, that place to learn. The way that I think I could get it back is by saving lives, by being able to you know, educate a young cat and say, oh, listen, nephew, I tell you my story and I share my story so you can learn from my story and don't live my story, nephew. If you're not a real one, real don't be one. Mm -hmm. Don't be no real Be a real you. Because if you could be a real you, you're going to win. If you be a real you're going in that grave or you're going in that cell. And what's real about that? What's, what's, what's so real about losing your life? Or what's so real about sitting in a cell where they can come and crack your door open and say, yeah, come on, spread that ass, spread them cheeks. Don't tell him that. <laughs> Don't say that around this. No, he'll like it. Oh, wait, hold on, <laughs> <laughs> That's all you want. Freaky Chan. But, but I'm just saying, it's like, like a woman in there, though. I don't know. Yeah, it might be. They ain't going to send a woman. They going to send a, uh, you know what I mean? But, but what I'm saying is like, so it's a mixture of that. So it's like, you know, we got to, uh, every, everybody out here is giving information. Mm -hmm. And that's what I be trying to tell people. That's why when I see us, especially black people that's in, in the space, black people that get in spaces, they think it always got to be one or we got to compete. Dumb shit. And I just seen a lot of weird shit myself where people get on these platforms and say little slick shit. Whereas though, me personally, I had to cut motherfuckers off because I'm like, damn. Because my thing is like this. Fred, you know me, I know you, we know each other. I would never say anything, anything to go against you or anybody else. To, to try to knock y'all down and make me better than y'all because I'm not, I'm human. We breathe in the same air, bro. But when I see that a lot of times as black folk, we got to understand that all of us got a part to play out here with this, the, you know, the podcast shows, whatever you want to call it. We got a part to play. Stop the bullshit. Play your part and keep it moving. Sometimes business ain't going to go right. Sometimes we ain't going to get along. Cool. But when it comes to educating people, we got to do that. Y'all sit here and y'all educate thousands and thousands of men. When y'all dead and gone, there's going to be young athletes watching y'all stuff that y'all created, watching y'all intellectual property that y'all created, episodes y'all, and learning information from them because they might be lost or they might don't have no elders, you know, like the place y'all y'all playing a part of elders for the for the league, not just not just for NFL but for sports because there's so many young brothers in the sports game that's lost. They hit these cities, they hit Philadelphia, they hit Cincinnati, they hit Oakland, they hit uh, Atlanta. The money, the women, they gone. The fake ass friends, they gone. They gonna be able to watch y'all show and y'all gonna be educating people when y'all gone. So the moves y'all making today is gonna secure the futures of the family members. Y'all won't even be living a week. Me, cause this is an intellectual prop. This shit is real. It's gonna be here forever. So you gotta understand like, I be trying to tell people we all together, but we just, all, it's always the ego. It's an ego battle. And like I said, that's why most black men die in the inner cities, because it's an ego clash. It's always an ego clash, but it's like, yo, bro, it's not that deep, bro. We sitting on camera just giving people information. Like, stop, <laughs> like, bro, like, it's right. not that deep, man. <laughs> what is I'm battling you? I don't want to fight you. I'm not a boxer, bro. <laughs> like, what is going on? Like, chill. Like, we got to chill, but we don't know how to do that sometimes. And they get real competitive about nothing. And it's like, if you really about what you're trying to do, you know what I mean? When I see the name Pivot, I'm thinking about pivoting. I pivot. I made an unbelievable pivot in life. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be people that y'all educate the pivot. Y'all educating people about that. Y'all having great conversations with legends 
I'm talking about legends, people that, some of the greatest people that ever walked this, this life. Y'all creating a mindset shift for people that watch this and be like, oh shit, that's what I could do? So that's why I'm like, what y'all doing? I saluted you ever since we first talked. It's like. A pivot back to the, the meeting oh, with yeah, Dave, meeting. right? And Barstool. How did you guys land that opportunity? What happened is, let me take it all the way back. I woke up one morning, it was like April 2019, somewhere around there, March, April. I'm reading the article, it's like four in the morning. I'm reading the article. Spotify, Spotify allocate 400 million to podcasts in the first quarter. I'm like, oh shit. Everybody been telling me and my cousin Gil to start a podcast, but we like, we waiting to get our numbers up. I call him, I say, listen, cuz, what would you want? Get up. Please, just read his article and call me back. He read the article and called me back. So by the time he read the article and called me back, I was already putting the play into the logo. I had the LLC getting drafted up, the trademark, everything in that one day. I said, later on, you won't get a docket signed, cuz, just sign this shit. <laughs> and like, he, he said, when he seen, he read that shit, he called me back. He said, what the f? I said, we going in the game. Uh, people was telling us for years to do a podcast, but my cuz already started from 2012, not a podcast, but he, he used to always give people a million dollars worth of game. Mm. But take it back to sports and you know, football, there was one person that called us all the time and they was doing a podcast and he used to be like, yo man, stop playing, stop playing, y'all need to, come on man, do that. I'm talking about this motherfucker called me all the time and this somebody that been close to me from, like since I came home from prison. This dude was a major person when I was in jail because Saturdays in prison, it's gambling time, baby. College football, baby, it's gambling. And this person that always called me and always connect to me, we talk to this day, it was Maurice Claret. Mm. He was the one that told, he used to tell me and Gil all the time, yo man, what is your, come on, I'm telling y'all missing money. You know what I mean? And what was so great is that cuz Gil already had like a saying, he had the million dollars worth of game, he was doing it. And that's like where it really, like 2012, all where he was building something. Right. So by the time I came home, I got my feet wet, I was able to come in and we was able to join in Scotty. We was able to, you know, uh, Stockman and Malone. We was having Shaq and Kobe this shit because, you know, we was named, but so when we started it, 2019 April, by November, I got Spotify on the phone. I think Shaka Zulu had made some calls too. So that's probably how Courtney Hope got my number okay. also. Shout out to Shaka Zulu. Um, and we talking to him and he said some shit to me like, how much you want? I almost dropped the phone. I was scared to death. Motherfucker asked me how much it went. I don't do that type of talk. <laughs> he said, how much do you want? How much you guys want? I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa. I don't, listen, man. So I said, damn, what we got to do? Like I said, uh, how, do, do we, you know I mean, do we get to stay on YouTube? We, he's like, we want everything. I said, nah, right. no, we ain't doing that. But we finished call. We talking back and forth. Then we got introduced to Barstool. And when we met them, it was like, that shit took five minutes, man. Because one thing about them, first of all, I love my partnership with them. They're great partners. And I think we need to amplify and educate people on the power of partnership. Eric Nardini, Dave, uh, Dave Portnoy over there, Gaz and everybody, the whole team over there, they great partners. And, and so we got with them and it was straight to the point. They already did their research. They was like, oh, you know, y'all the real deal. Y'all shit is real. I mean, we don't got nothing like y'all, but we'd love to partner up with y'all. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? Y'all keep your IP. We do, you know, we gonna figure out the merch because they got a great merch business over there. And uh, we just gonna figure this business out, but we gonna do it. Ad rev split. I said, all right, bet. Basically, a licensing deal. That's it. Took us four or five minutes. We done that. And through the partnership, it was just a lot of information. I would go to the office, and everybody was everybody was in the office from the sales team to the marketing team to the editing team to the graphic team. Everybody was educational. I would go there for I go up to New York for two days. You know what I mean? And just kick it with, and they would just get wallow. This is this. See these numbers? This is this, this is the RSS feed. This is this, wallow, boom. This is how we do the merch, wallow. This is how you do the sales. This is what the average. The, mm -hmm. I never seen no place like that. There wasn't no secret squirrel shit going right. on. It was real uh, transparent partnership. And I said, okay. And uh, you know, they did something that, 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 that blew my mind. I get a call from Erica one day. She called me, she said, wallow. I need you to, you and Gil to meet some people. I said, all right, cool. I'm like, all right, ain't no problem. We could, could, could go with him. So she said, these are some important people. So me and Gil say, all right, cool. We go to New York, go to the meeting, right? Just me and Gil. And Dave calls, like, yo, I want you to meet these guys. They, we walk into the room, nice little restaurant. And what's the name? It's two guys. Shake my hand. They say, hey, we such and such, such and such. I said, so, so what do y'all do, right? This way it get tricky, Fred, because I, I didn't lie. I'm like, this shit never happened to me in my life. 
He said, oh yeah, yeah we, 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 fund, we funded Barstool, we fund them. Dang. So, so I say, oh, oh, what the f are you talking about? So when I call Erica, I, I go to the bathroom, I'm like, Erica, no. she said, no, you know, y'all growing and y'all gonna become big like us, so we, we wanna introduce y'all to the, some capital. Mm -hmm. All right. This shit don't happen, bro. Right. Who take you? Who take you to go meet the plug? Yeah. And say here. Exactly. That's, That's when I knew these people was righteous people. Wow. It wasn't no try to middleman and none of that. It was like mm -hmm. here go some people. They do funding. We did some business with them in the past. They got unlimited. And when I say they own every, they, they got ownership in everything. Name a brand, and, and more than likely they got some ownership in it because they wow. funded them. Mm -hmm. right. These VCs big time. So that showed me some different shit. You see what I'm saying? That showed me some different when you're dealing with partners that's willing to say, you know what? We don't know how long our partnership might last, but here goes some funding people that you might need. Here goes some OPM, right. some other people's money, some great partners. You know, they might want a little action on some, uh, some equity, but it's going to be worth it. So that's the next level shit that I, that I love because what's going on out here sometimes, and, I, and, I be, and, and sometimes a lot of people don't talk about it, when you're doing business, you got to do business with business. And I don't think a lot of times we don't know how to do business with business as black people because we, we got this thing in us where it's though, there's a lot of cultural finessing going on. Right. Oh, no, do this with... No, no, I'm doing business. Right. Now, if we doing that, business, that that's cultural cool. Cultural finessing is cultural they're going to market what they're doing by saying we got to be black. We got to be gotta black. We got to be black. But our business ain't got to be right. And right. I'm not saying that's for everybody. Right. But, 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 but when you look at it, it's about partnership. And if it's partnership, don't try to coach or finesse me because, like, we supposed to do business and, and, and how I'm going to do business with you and y'all, you know, 85 or $75 million short than what these people talking about. What we talking about now? We not talking no business. Oh, we black. Ho, 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 ho. I'm trying to make moves today that's going to secure the futures of the family members I won't be living to me. I can't do that playing this bullshit, and you trying to finesse me so you can middleman, because you're not taking me to the plug like they did. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do that. You want to get in between me and say, uh, here go 10 million, but I'm going to make 40 on the back, because I'm going to cut y'all off. Middleman, y'all, ain't going to educate y'all about the business of this shit. And it's going to be a lot of money coming in for marketing and ad that you're not going to know about. But take this little punk ass 10. We not doing that. Me and Gilly ain't doing that. Because one thing about us, we the outsiders. We not, we not doing all that. We don't do that all that. Uh, and I think a lot of times, a lot of people get mixed up in all these partying, celebrity, all this fake ass get together stuff. We don't do that shit. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we don't fuck with our people, we do. But it's a lot of bullshit that come with that. And a lot of people get drunk in these parties, these what's the name, next thing you know, they signing some bullshit. Right. Because we can pull our paperwork out. We own 100%. We getting real serious money. We just ain't no bullshit. This ain't... For real, for real, I, I feel like I play in the league. Baseball. Mm. <laughs> Guaranteed. You, you said something, you said baseball. Though. Baseball. Baseball different. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I'm going to be playing for a while. Right. Love it. You see what Love I'm saying? And, and I only do 36 months deals. And I only do licensing deals. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a different conversation. So at a lot of times, we got to take our business to where business want to respect our business. That's it. That's all I'm telling people. If it so happen to be black people, cool. If it's not... Cool, but don't don't be finessed into the that coach. Do it for the culture. All right, what you mean do it for the culture? Who, who, I got to do it for my babies. I got to do it for my grandmother. You got to do it for your kids. You got to do it for you. Got to do it for your kids and your wife. If you expire today, mm -hmm. if you expire today, how your people gonna be taken care of? Because the culture ain't coming to worry about your motherfucking people. Wallo, peep this, right? Like you know a lot, bro. Like you giving us game. Like you really know a lot. When did you give yourself that game? At what moment? If you can go back, what was the moment that uh, you said, you know what, this is it. This is going to be my lane, and I'm going to run it no matter what. Like, well, it was in, in, when you was doing your bid, did something inspire you to, 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 to change your entire mindset? Like, what? what when, when I was in jail, and I realized. When was that come to God moment? First, when I was in jail, and I realized, this is what I realized. When I was in jail, and I realized this, I was living a lie because I was out there in the streets being somebody that I wasn't. You know why I knew how it wasn't that person? Because every time I did some dumb shit or some street shit, I would always question myself, like, damn, why you do that? You ain't had to do that. Or I would question the homie, like, yo, why the fuck you, uh, you ain't had to hit him upside his head? What the fuck we, man, but stop bitching. I had a consciousness. But I wasn't around the right people to, like, a lot of times when you ain't around the right people, it fuck you up. So that's what happened to me. But I got that, but when we talk about business, when I got out of jail, all I ever did in jail was read. 
and I wanted to know something. If I want to know something, I'm going to do the research on what I wanted to know. And one thing about partnership, outside of just Barstool, I have an unbelievable, un, unbreakable, extraordinary partnership with my cousin Gilly. That's my big cousin. Um, what he did, he laid the foundation. When I was in jail, he was out here putting it down through the whole time, staying alive, doing whatever he had to do to stay alive. He laid the foundation. So I said, okay, we got a part to play. Because you did that, cuz, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. My responsibility is research. I'm the research guy. I'm gonna go and do the research and all that shit. And once it get to this where it need to be at, before it get to legal, I'm coming to you. Cuz, look at this shit right here. The same way we do when we deal with contracts and we be doing deals, we huddle. Because the way a contract is done is like this. And we right here, we're going to talk about it this and the third. As soon as we talk about it, figure it out. To make sure we solid on what we said, now go to legal. Your lawyers and my lawyers are going to talk, and they're going to make sure everything that we agreed upon and we said to them on the phone, and he said, boom. Because you got numbers, right? You can look at numbers. But it's a measurement of cultural impact you can't look at. Wow. Now, when you're looking at y'all, it's like, okay, here go your numbers. Dennis, hold up, the pivot? What's the cultural impact measurement of the pivot? Now, that's a whole different play. Because when I'm looking at y'all, I'm looking at, hold up, we got, this is not no show where you got some people that didn't play and get dirty talking about sports. These people that got dirty, y'all bled for this shit. Numbers, mm-hmm. y'all got good numbers, Y'all got good retention rate. Y'all got that. Y'all got blood, sweat, and tears as NFL athletes. Then y'all got influence over athletes because y'all got a platform that educate athletes. And because you got to think, when we say athletes, we're not just talking about pros. We're talking about these kids in high school. Right. Mm-hmm. We're talking about anybody that's in this, in this. Everybody watch y'all show that's into sport. They watching this shit. Y'all got some great guests. And when the guests come here, they open up. Mm-hmm. That's hard. A lot of people you see, you know, it's only certain shows where there's no guests go to and they bleed on camera. A lot of people ain't gonna bleed. They ain't gonna show their blood. They gonna sit there right. and shell up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. So, so you gotta measure all that shit. How do you measure that shit? That's a good question. So, you know, that's how that go. And, and Wallo, I gotta ask you, man, cause um, the penal system fucked up. We all know it, war on drugs, the brown and black people, yeah. the population. Honestly, just the population of our prisons mm-hmm. are bigger than any other country in the world. We know it's messed up, but it seems like prison worked for you. Oh my God. You know, it seemed like the, 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 the rehabilitation was, if you never, if you didn't get caught with them robberies, you would've keep robbing people. Oh, without a doubt, I was gonna get busy that day. The next day, I was, get, I was waking up. So it worked for you. I'm not gonna say rehabilitation because, let me explain something to you. Prison is a big place, right? Everybody, every counselor, uh, it's not enough programs, it's not enough counselors, it's not enough therapists. You go to prison to rehabilitate yourself. Prison is not a place for rehabilitation. Prison is a business, and what business do you know that don't want their customers to come back? Mm -hmm. Prison is business. Big business in America. That's real. It's big business. It ain't about no rehabilitation. Because rehabilitation was real. When you come out, people will respect you like that. But if you get a, if you get a crime on your jacket, you done for life. Yeah. So we're not going to we don't believe in rehabilitation from the system doing it. You got to rehabilitate. If you walk in here today, you got to figure out yourself how I'm going to do this shit myself and how I'm going to change. Because there's a lot of time and there's a lot of space in there. And ain't nobody worrying about you if you're not worrying about you. Motherfucker right. trying to come there, do their job and roll. Get their eight hours. If you learn it, I ain't worrying about you. I'm just coming here chill. Some motherfuckers don't do nothing in there on the staff side of things. So it's like, you got to figure that shit out yourself. Yeah. But we, we, we keep forgetting prison is, prison is one of the big corporations of America. You got to stay in the whole industry. Prison, police, parole officers, judges. Motherfuckers stop doing crime, we done. America going to fall. Think about that shit. It built America. So shit going to fall. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand that. So it's like, it's up to you. And they, you know, and, and they give you time and a lot of time and space to figure this shit out. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Like when you get sentenced, oh yeah, we're gonna give you some time, go ahead and think about that shit. Yeah. That, and you gotta figure it out. But it's not their job to figure it out for you. A big thing you mentioned 
earlier when you were saying you weren't in prison, you were in Princeton. And yeah. in your time in jail, you talked about reading. And you know, I know you wrote in the Book of Life yeah. and all of those things. But what I've admired about you and watching you is vulnerability, is openness. You talked about bleeding. And you've bled, whether it be on your social media, on a million dollars worth of game, all of those things, you've shown your true self. And speaking with Dirk, and you were talking about yeah. King Vaughn and forgiving your brother's killer. Yeah. Tears in your eyes and talking about it. And the way you've inspired people through that story, everything that you have mentioned is about loving black people, but also understanding how the stereotypes of what makes black people popular or strong or tough, yeah. right, are things that we have to break in order to be successful, in order to give back to community. Where did you learn or when did, when did it become apparent to you that authenticity, vulnerability is what we need as a community in order for our communities to grow? I stopped giving a fuck, man. Like, 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 like one of the greatest things that happened to me when I was in prison, I cried. Because as a kid in a community, especially a boy in a, in a ghetto, you're told to be tough by your mom, fall off the swing. You better not cry. Boy, stop crying. Everybody teach you the dehumanization of black people is a deep thing by black people. Don't be a fucking human, be a robot. Don't feel, be tough, don't cry. You're going, don't, don't go through a hard moment. You can't say, I'm stressed out, I'm going through it, that's weak. You can't say, I'm depressed, that's weak. You can't cry, that's weak. You can't get emotional and tell a woman, oh baby, I love you in public. You soft ass, you're a simp. We, listen, think about this. You will be called a simp if you told the woman the mother of your child, the woman you love, that you love her out loud. And you always, you regularly told her that in, a, in an environment where they don't do that, that simp ass, he a simp. Think about how we think, bro. I'm like, I ain't got time for that shit. That shit, that shit is heavy. To carry around this joint, I ain't gonna feel, I ain't gonna cry. Man, that shit will, you will explode. Your back will hurt. You be fed up. So I said, I ain't got time for that bullshit, man. I'm just gonna get out here and I'm gonna live my life. And if you like it, like it. If you don't, don't. It's 8 billion people on the planet. I don't need anybody to fuck with me to win. If you don't mess with me, so what? Because I ain't tough. Because I don't want to be a real no more. You tripping. And when I was real, I wasn't a real nigga because I still had questions about that. About, hold up, did I do that right? Was I supposed to do that? I mean, that didn't feel good. Come on, man. Be bullshit, man. Hey, my man, talk about a million dollars worth the game. We're going to take a break just to give a shout out to DraftKings. And DraftKings is still running a deal where if any new customer signs up, uses the promo code PIVOT, any pregame money line wager, $5. You win, you hit, you get $150 in free bets. And it's a big time week in the AFC North because Pittsburgh and Baltimore, they reunite that old rivalry. You know I love my same game parlays. Multiple bets on the same game and have a chance of winning even more money on that game. I got to go with Miami, L.A., two young quarterbacks yeah. dueling it out. I think I'm going to go on the side, and I'm going to take some overs because I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. The sports book is not everywhere, but don't worry. DraftKings got you. DraftKings Daily Fantasy and DraftKings Rainmakers. They're going to still put money in your pocket. Go check them out. Right now, get your devices out, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. It's the perfect place for you to play and have a great time. Now we're getting back to Wallow. You start to build while you're in jail. You yeah. get out. I think it was something like 150 days. You had 60,000 like 60, Instagram followers. But you got immediate fame. Even being in jail and, you, like you said, rehabilitating yourself, it doesn't prepare you for that, right? You, you, you don't go from robbing and boosting and, and, and doing things to right away you're famous and you're famous for positivity. How did you adjust to now not only being in the spotlight, but being thought of as an inspiration and now moving forward in that. Like to be to be realistic, what you like, like Gil would tell you, Gil, Gil be like, you don't even know what's going on. He say that to me all the time, cause I'll be like, man, leave me alone. I'm gonna go ahead and make me my tuna, my oldest news and chill, man. I ain't got time for all this shit. Like I'll be in the cut. I don't really look at it like that. Cause I'm not tripping it off nobody. Cause guess what? The same way you can bleed and die, I can. The same ear you breathe, I ain't better than you and you ain't better than me. And that's how I look at life. So I'm not tripping off of it. It's not that deep to me. I help people, and, I, and, and, and I'm the help that I wanted when I was in prison. Everybody said they want somebody to help them, but when are you going to be the help that you want, want for yourself? And that's it, and I back up. I go in the cut. 
I go in the crib, I go to my little little food spots, eat my shit, and I dip. I don't care. Because it's not that deep, because I'm not trying to flex on nobody. That's the thing that's different for me. I'm not trying to look for no acceptance from a bunch of people that really don't love me, but just love me for a popularity and fame. Now, I'm cool with the little people that love me. I'm, I'm cool with that, you know what I mean? Now, if I help you, I'm thankful for that. But you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta reward me. You ain't gotta, I'm just living my life, and I guess this, this is what mission I was on. You see what I'm saying? Like, you gotta think about this, man. I'm from about, I'm from about like 40 blocks from here. My brother died in my grandma's arm about 40 blocks from here. And that 40 blocks from here, I got a lot of homies. I'm talking about Richie. I'm talking about Lil Larry, Fatty, um, uh, 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 Kendall, Baldy, J Rose, Rundy, Jason, uh, uh, Lil Jamil, Aunt Lo, Lil Steve. Um, it's a, I could go on. I could, I could drive. I could drive 55. All died. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? They all dead. So, so for me, it'd be hard. Cause it'd be like, they ain't get a chance to do what I'm doing, and they ain't get a chance. And I wish that they could. It'd be like, I'd be in my own world sometimes, cause I'd be like, I, where my people at? Where the people I grew up with? Why they ain't get a chance to live like me? How did I do this and they didn't? So it'll be a lot I'll be battling with. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times I'll just be like, ah. Cause, you know, I know people out here, but I don't know people out here. I know my people that, 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 that you know, got killed when they were 16 or this. You know, so it's, it's real wild. Or mm-hmm. the homies that's in the penitentiary that can't come back. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 just, it's just crazy. I got a call, right? And I ain't even share this with nobody, but I got a call from one of my homies in prison. And I was so, like when, when, when I answered the call, he was so happy. And I was like, yeah, I'm, you know. And, and when he told me what he told me, I was excited. I'm like, damn. He said, man, uh, he said, I'm finally getting out of jail, man. I'm coming, I'm coming home, bro. I said, bam. I said, yeah, I said, I got you. You see what I'm saying? I know, you know, he been down for like, damn near 20 something years. This was one of my cellmates in the joint. He probably got like 27 years in. I'm making parole, baby. I said, what? I said, my fucking man is going down, baby. I, I got you, I'm gonna show you life. You know what I mean? And all this type of shit running through my joint. I'm sending him to Miami. I'm gonna let him do this. I'm gonna do this down third. And then I said, so what, like what they do? Like when, like when you doing? He said, I don't know, man. I probably like about like six, seven months, they saying. I'm like, so, you know, I'm kicking it with him. I'm like, what date? They ain't giving you no date yet? Like, you don't, he said, I don't know no date for sure, but I'm coming home, baby. I'm finally getting out of jail. He was excited. And then, and then I said, so what happened in the courts? He said, no, I ain't, ain't nothing happened in the courts, but I'm finally going. I said, what you, well, how you getting out? He said, homie, I got cancer, man. I'm ready to be out of here, man. Damn. That shit. It was, it was so much. It was like, damn. Cause he, he used to talk about getting out of jail like it was, you know, when he had life and it's like, he was so excited that, that he gonna die and get out of jail. That he got to die to get out of jail. And it was like, I'm coming home. And I was like, and I was so excited for him, but it was like, I know this dude, man. He, he a good dude. I, I, I ain't saying what he did was what he did wasn't wrong, but I know him, and it's like he like man, he never got a second chance, and he was so happy that he gonna be dying soon, and he felt as though he gonna be out of here just to be able to just to be able to be free. That's fucked up, man. So it's like it'd be so much in me fighting because I'm like, damn, there's so many people that I know. I know they'd be happy for me and I wish they could celebrate with me because it don't mean shit to me. You see what I'm saying? Because it's like, everybody think money is that. Money, you know, and I'm not saying that nobody can't make people happy that's around you, but if you're empty, you still gonna be empty. If you're lonely, you still gonna be lonely. If you're hurting, you still gonna be hurting. And I know there's plenty of players, as y'all know, that was in fucked up position, no matter how much money they get because there's certain people that you want to do things or certain people that you just want to be around you. Cause you know, you know they don't need nothing from you. 
you know? Because this is it, lonely at the top, baby. And a lot of people say that, but it's real because everybody, you don't know who angling. Now you got to be paranoid out this fuck in order to survive. So this shit is deep. So when I say there's so many people and I be feeling fucked up a lot of times, it's because of that. There's so many people that I wish was here with me right now to be able to celebrate, but they not. With all that, man, it's crazy. You tell that story about your man's in jail. And then when you was rattling off your homeboys, I thought you was about to say they still there. No. You named a dozen names. That no, I got died. more. It's more. Are you desensitized to it? Because I lost my grandparents, maybe 90 years old, you know what I'm saying? But you lose uh, young men that you grew up with at a young age. I was talking to a sister named Shay. At that time, she was working for the Sixers. And Shay, and Shay, uh, she close friend of a girl that's like my sister named Nisa. And I remember one time we was talking, and she said she never been to a funeral or some shit, right? She was in San Diego. And I, and, and I snapped, like, how the f you never been to a funeral? That's crazy. And later on, Nisa talked to me. She's like, well, she's like, Wallow, I know, you, I know you're used to it, but that's not normal. It got to a point where I've been to so many funerals, it's just like sometimes become like just going to a little get-together. It's not even a funeral no more. So I might be f***ed up from that because, like, it's like, my grandma said, I've been to, I remember one summer, she was like, you've been to more funerals in the summer than I did my whole life. My grandma, you know, she damn near 90 now, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's wild, man. So you just become numb to a lot of shit, man. Do you have any survivor's remorse? Because yeah. You, 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 yeah, you not only survive, but you thrive, and then you can name all of those people. It's hard, you know, coming out of prison, I don't think too many people was ever to accomplish on the level I did, you got people like Bernard Hopkins, did pre but it's not a lot of people, it's not a lot of us. My man El Sori do a lot of film stuff. You gotta, you gotta select few, but it's not a lot of people that come out, that shit is hard. And I be trying to tell family members, like when people come home from prison, you gotta be patient with them. Cause this, we never get a lot of this back. A lot of us is fucked up. And um, you gotta be patient with them. And the most scariest day for a dude getting out of prison is the, is the day he get out of prison. That's the worst day of prison. Because now you got to be everything that you told your family you changed into on that phone. And you never had no temptation. You never had nothing coming to you to test to see if you that guy you said you was. So now it's real. So it's like, it's a lot, man. It's just a lot. We could see the range of emotions and you don't hide things. And in, in hearing you speak, like I hear the pain. I hear the, the lessons. I hear the experience. How do you find joy? Because what you've accomplished is truly tremendous. To, to, to sit in, like you say, you met the plug. Like it's, it's different when you meet the plug on the outside and the plug on the up and up. That, yeah. that, that's a sign of making it. Where do you find your joy in all the things that you've accomplished? You know, when, I, when, I'm, with, when I'm with uh, my niece, uh, when I'm with my cousin, when I'm with certain family members, I had a moment, but it's like, I realized that I, a friend had asked me not too long ago, like, Wallo, what do you do to have fun? I didn't even know what to tell her, because I just grind. I don't know, it's probably gonna be when I have a kid or something, you know, uh, something like that. I don't know, man, you know? Because it's like, I just be, all I do is like, is grind. You know, and I think sometimes even my grind I have a lost relationship with people. Because it's like my dreams, it's like, I just, I think, I was so much in competition with the person I used to be and getting far away from that person that I don't never want to stop. So it's like, I don't even know what that joy is. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's not like about, you know, money isn't uh, things that, uh, I don't know. I, I, sometimes I think most I might get joy and it's like when I be wrestling and reading and trying to do research or some shit and that's still working. So I don't know. I listened to you talk in the, the middle of this show, and man, it was boom, 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 boom. And like, I can truly see why people follow you and listen to you, how you motivate people, how you inspire people. But we ask what you do for joy, and you start to stumble, right? Like, like you're searching for words, you're searching for, for a thought. And to, to me, like it's almost like, and I don't, and I hope this doesn't offend you. Sad to me. Yeah, it is. Because I feel like you should be not only celebrated by us and celebrated by the people that you inspire and that you affect and that you help. You gotta celebrate yourself. I've been, you know what? I've been, uh, you know, I got people, Gil. You got people, friends that always say that, and I just be like, 
I just be cool. Like, like I, you know, after this, I'm, I'm gonna go in the crib and chill. I don't know what it is, man. I, you know, uh, I don't know if it's that cell therapy. I go in the crib, go in my bedroom, lock the door and, and chill. Do my reading, look at shit. Um, go on YouTube, do my research and just, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you um, I don't know if I'm just conditioned to that. Waking up in the morning, uh, the same, I don't know, it's repetitious. But, but one thing I do, I do get excited from grinding. I do get excited from pushing people. Cause I think I, you know, it's easy for me to be pushed cause I could just get, you know what I mean? But it's like, that's the only joy I got. Isn't, isn't that institutionalized? I might be. Cause you just, it was weird when you said that you wake up in the morning still, you've been out of jail for years. Yeah. And you still on prison Same time. Same thing, I wake up, um, um, a lot of foods, I eat the tuna. A lot of shit, I, I you know, peanut butter, I'm on the same, you know, I'm just on the same thing. And I, and I know, like... Uh, you gotta break that, bro. I know, it's, it's, it's just like, it, it, it might be a comfort zone for me, I don't know. But I know when it's time for me to help people. It's time for me to push people. It's time for me to do business and execute the plan. I'm excited in the motherfucker. So I don't know. You know? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that. Uh, aside from your own personal wins, how much did it, does it excite you to? The, you've executed the plan, but you got your cousin with you. Is you guys had those conversations. Like, how does that drive you to to keep trying to kill this space and I, you know make sure you do everything right by it? I love because my cousin, uh, he went through a lot of shit and he was blackballed. It was a lot of shit, and to see him win is anything to me. Like, like I, I get so excited seeing us win together because he win. Right. And I never thought, you know, and, and, and you know, I'm one of the people like this, and I tell people I'm a team player. It's gonna be days when he gonna go out there and score 50, and I'm just gonna be giving him his water, grabbing his towel, because uh, I'm a real team player. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and I, it's never, never, just about me. It's about us. So you know, I know the role I gotta play. And like, uh, and it's funny you say that because he be on me. Man, go go ahead, man. Come to the Bahamas with me. Go here, man. Fuck you. He always be on me. Like, right. go out there, man. You got. He always say that to me. It's funny. Cause you gotta live, cuz. Right. He always say that That's to me. So I, the I, other I think day. I think my my foot is stepping out a little more in here. I'm doing a little shit here and there, but I just gotta just do it more. You know, uh, got a passport. I'm. A, I, I, it's gonna connect. Yeah, man. It's this deep. You gave us a million dollars worth of game, and we <laughs> love it, bro. But you know how my mind works. I just, there's some things I have to ask. Go ahead, man, go ahead. <laughs> About this prison stint. I just gotta know 20 years alone. Did, 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 did anybody try to take your cookies? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say this. It was some situations, right? Where it was some old finesses in there. It didn't get to that point. Yeah. But they had plans of trying to uh, distract my innocence from me, yeah. probably. <laughs> rather, <laughs> rather, it was, rather it was throwing something on my bed, doing the laundry. Yeah. You know, because a motherfucker do your laundry, take your laundry bag, do your laundry, fold it up, come back and be nice on your bed, some box of candy, uh, uh, nutty bars or something. You're like, damn, hey, this joint. And because that's how I was like, oh shit, this joint, this. And some of them always, oh, what the fuck, who did? You know, straight some things out. It's always a, uh, it's always a chance that your innocence yeah. can be devalued from you. Okay. And, then, and when you got out 20 years and not hollering at a woman, Mm -hmm. Did you have a game when you got out? Could you go talk to a woman normally or was it weird? No, I was running, I was jumping out the car. Cause listen, you gotta understand. I'm gonna say this though. The body of a woman was different to now. So when I was coming home, I want some old school shit. We'd be driving, say me and you driving somewhere. I'd be like, yo, yo, go, pull over. Jump out the car, run down the street. Yo, what's up shorty, like what's yeah. going on? And, and they thought I was tripping yeah. because after a while, I realized dudes don't even holler at chicks like that no more. They go in the DM and try to say some shit. The dudes be out here acting more like bad bitches than the bad bitches. <laughs> I didn't know. I'm just saying that. I didn't, I didn't know. I'm thinking, this is what we supposed to do, right? right. I'm supposed to show you that I'm, I'm attracted to you and I'm trying to holler at you. <laughs> the women got, I, I noticed after a while, some people say, wow, you can't do that shit. And then some women that look like I'm tripping. Like I'm like, damn, I'm showing you that I want to talk to you, right? What I'm supposed to do? So I was a little lost for that for a minute. Then I was like, you know what? I got to chill for and, and then, and Gil kicked, uh, pick up with me about it because I went on a hiatus when I was like, you know what? I shouldn't even be hollering the chicks right now. I got to get my money right. I was just watching pornos and just jerking off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, cause I was like, 
I'm not in no position. I ain't got my credit right. I ain't got no license. I'm living in my grandma middle room, so I can't bring no ass up in grandma middle room and be tearing the ass in the nanny here next door. <laughs> Boy, what you doing? <laughs> so I got to go in a room. I got to go in a room and turn, you know, watch some, watch some porn on the phone. You know what I mean? And squeeze off like I'm in jail. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want nanny here. So, so my life was different. My life was set up different based off of my, I didn't have my life together. Right. Like, I don't think a dude should be hollering at a woman if he ain't got his shit together. Right. Because you can't take out nowhere. What is you doing trying to holler at a woman? You ain't even got your... I think your credit and getting your bread together is more important than getting some ass. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can watch some porn and handle that, but it's like, that's where I was at. My game was not... Was my game tight? Couldn't have been. My game was aggressive than a motherfucker because I'm seeing his <laughs> ass. I'm like... Whoa, them bodies wasn't like that when I was. This some new shit. Yeah. The waist, ah, whoa. I'm like, whoa. You know what I mean? I didn't. I couldn't tell who had a weave or who had long hair. I'm thinking, damn, she got some Indian in her family. <laughs> you know how we was like, yeah. ooh, look at that shit. The hair, ooh. We had some beautiful babies. That's how motherfuckers think it, cause you don't know. Then you see that little lace. Front. Ball head as hell. Yeah. You see that little lace front. You gotta get up close yeah. to see that, and the light hit it and show it. Yeah. But, but the girls got some good joints. The, the HD joints where you don't see the joints, so he'd be like, oh. She definitely got some Indian in her family. Yeah. Did you yeah, see it, them in the in the, uh, in the Target parking lot on Thanksgiving? Oh my God. They had any. Now listen, now listen, you know what's crazy about that? They was over there. Ain't nobody bring me a plate, but it was some beautiful sisters there. <laughs> you know what I mean? After you left though. Yeah, after I left, I didn't listen. You know what's crazy? I didn't know that they listen, this is no bullshit. I really didn't know it was gonna be cool. Cause everything be hoping on Thanksgiving these days. So everything, so I didn't know that many mother people was gonna, I said 15 people. I said, 15 women is that third. So once I do the video, I'm like, damn, ain't nobody here. I was knocked off. Couple sisters, like four sisters rolled up, socked it to the pot, gave me some bread. I jump in my car and I just leave. I'm like, all right, but that ain't open, it's cool. Everybody gonna stay home because they just seen that it was closed. Somebody sent me a video like, Wallow, the police captain is looking for you. He said, where Wallow at? I need to talk to Wallow to get these people out of here. Cause it was just like hundreds of people. I didn't know they was gonna come. So I said, okay. I said, tomorrow I'm not gonna announce them. I'm just gonna slide back through. Whoever there, I'm gonna bless them. And that's what happened. Bro, you 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 really put us on a thousand percent. And I'm glad we connected. And uh, for people who don't know, when we got started, it was in January before we really took off. You hit us. Yeah, I did. Well, you hit me and said, keep pushing. I always give people their flowers, right? Yes. Uh, but I'm I'm really inspired by, you know, your passion and how you've come out and uh really just evolve into something that's, to someone that's stand, standing for something. Uh, I wanna know who's been your uh, favorite guest on you guys' show, or who resonated the most with you? There's a lot of interviews, but I'm gonna say this. Mike Tyson is one of the most transparent human beings on this earth. Mm -hmm. I love Mike. He don't, he don't know how to lie, which is a beautiful thing. I love, I really love that Mike episode because it was like, we talking about a legend, man. They get on here and just be real about everything. Had all the money in the world. Don't be, he a down to earth person. I ain't saying others ain't, but it's just, it's a lot, you know? I think it was Mike. I believe Mike, man, he was. He tried to get you to eat some, uh, what? No, he tried to get Gil. He tried to get Gil to do it. I wasn't going to do it. He tried to get Gil to do it. I wasn't gonna do it. I don't do that shit. I don't do drugs. I never did a drug a day in my life, but but it was like he was just so that's a bad motherfucker, man. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. He's scary. Yeah. I mean, he bad, man. And I mean he he got, you know, he got up on me like we was just like, it's like, yeah, Mike got a couple moves, and I was like, I hope he don't hit me with no body shot, man. <laughs> I'm just fucking with Mike. Like this motherfucker <laughs> kill me. But like, he is so real, he's so funny. I it's just Mike. It's just, it was just crazy, man. Mike is the, Mike is that guy to me, man. You are so transparent and you do have so much content. You, it feels like we know you. Mm -hmm. Sitting down here with you, man, there was so much depth to what you feel, how you communicated, who you are. And I think, and I hope that people who are fans of you or people who are fans of ours or if somebody get an opportunity to watch this, this episode, they can realize that. I will say this though. Maybe change the name of your show. I know Gilly had it going before you. The game you spit, bro, is priceless. And y'all shouldn't put a number on that, man. So uh -huh. thank you so much thank for you, your man. time, man.
That was amazing, bro. Straight up. Mm-hmm. Appreciate, appreciate you, man. That was dope, dog. Appreciate oh, y'all, man. Yeah, he, oh, appreciate you, <laughs> he, 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 he wanted a range of emotion, yeah. guys, though. Yeah, no, because like you laugh, you, like you learn, yeah, I was then you get sad yeah. as hell. Yeah. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. On the mission, got me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. On the mission, got me up.